Welcome fellow folders and in today's video we're going to be looking at again the process of figuring out how to shape a model from a crease pattern and it's basically um, reverse engineering a fold that you see or the designers fold probably the designers because they most likely do it the best but let's get right into it so here we have the crease pattern for the model that we will be focusing on today and it is the Origami Scale Dragon version 2 by uh, Siohua Siohua uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name correctly but you can follow them in the description, the link to their YouTube channel is in the description, make sure to follow them um, you can see how they made the, their dragon as well which is really neat, um, a cool process um, to witness from the designer which you don't often see. So anyway, um, I'll have the picture on the screen as well uh, throughout the video, throughout the entire video, just so you can look at that, look at what I'm saying, try and um, compare them. Um, I'll have a picture uh, so I can see as well off camera, so I can help keep reference. So the base of the model, in fact, I'll show you before, the crease pattern is this. So we have body scales, we have four sets of legs, we have the head, head spikes, and then the teeth, and then the tongue, and then uh, the wings at the side. It's a really unique and uh, crazy impressive model to, to fold, so I can't wait to finish mine and show you it. But a little thing to realise that I'll get into it, um, the scales are one unit too high, so there's a tiny mistake in these plates, so they should be down an extra unit, but glad I realised this um, while test folding, test folding is again it's super important if you want to try and get things as perfect as possible, that allows you to spot mistakes like that. Um, Maybe it wasn't intentional to make the folder realise that they shouldn't actually do uh, do this, but um, someone drew it on Discord as well, which is really neat. So I'll have uh, a link to that in the description as well. So if you want to download the the coloured version of this with the correct, um, they have fixed that part. They must have realised that as well, which is really cool. So you can download that. I don't have that on me here. So the base of the model. It's this. It's basically what it looks like. Um, I have pegged it just to show you how it looks. Um, it's easier to show it this way because it does um, open up completely. Um, so it's a bit easier. Yeah, I'm zoomed all the way out to show. So if you can already tell, we'll go through it. Let's take these pegs off. So in the centre, we have the body pleats, which is here, we have four sets of legs, in fact we'll go with the tail, which is just this end part here, and then we have four sets of legs, so if we're holding it like this, and then this is how the model will be, tail, tail, so back leg, back leg, front leg, and front leg here, and then the head is all this big crazy part right here and then the wings so you've got to this part you've managed to collapse the crease pattern how do I go about turning this into this I don't know if the picture will be up here or here but I'll be on the I'll keep the picture on the screen for, for the entire duration but how do I go about turning this somewhat that somewhat has a resemblance to the model to the finished model into the finished model. So we're going to go through the process of that. Hopefully you can learn some tips and tricks on how to do that. Okay, let me bring this up a little bit more. Okay, so 
we're basically just going to go through each part and I'll tell you my thought process on what I would do and what I've got planned. So if we look at the designer's fold, um, we have the tail, we'll start with the tail first. So assuming that if you don't shape the tail, if you just glue all the layers, and then this is what you'll get. Basically, like Ryujin, near enough. Um, it's very similar to Ryujin. And the des designer's fold, he has done the dorsal spines. So now on my picture. So he's done the dorsal spines on about three quarters of the tail and then he's sunk an extra unit into the into the body to get it nice and thinner and then he sort of just curved it up and then the point it's really it's really come to a point at the end so it's most likely just a matter of um, trying to um, I'd pr probably play about with this before I decided on how I would do mine but it's most likely just uh, thinning it down it looks to be he has maybe an extra spike at the very edge but again it's yes I mean you could get away with that with just a sink sinking all the layers to get it nice and thin and then that would be that would be that so let's take this off so what I thought about doing is now I think it would probably be easier to do this just for the back part so what I'm thinking is I will shape the dorsal spines as normal from the, f the back leg upwards because it does get quite thick because you're having to compensate for all of these layers and the thickness of the body look at the size of the thickness so we have the main body to the back body it's much more thinner so I think it would be much easier to do it on this part so what I'm going to do is uh, shape the dorsal spines as normal from here upwards and then here the body will get one unit smaller so again what I'm thinking is I'm going to make a mountain fold here which I already did I will then do it like this let's see if I can get it all the way up because I when I shape, I'm always trying to do things different. I don't want to um, reproduce something that's already been done, or I don't want to try and have the same thing as a designer, because even though that is perfection, um, I would like to try something new. Again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's just personal preference for me. I would like to try and have something completely different. In a way, I would like mine to stand out. So, once I do that, I would fold it over. In fact, let me do it on this side as well. It'll be easier to show. Because when I was playing about with this base, I, I realised I think I can do this for the bottom half. Because I think it's going to be a really... something different. Um, I think it's going to add a really nice... Uh, more fierce touch to the model. But I don't think I'll get it all the way up uh, on this. So let's just leave it on the So once we have four, I'm going to try and peg it as best as possible. So let's just peg it here. That seems good enough. Let's just add two. So because we have sunk an extra, there's a half unit, a unit, uh, half a unit into the body, it's not going to be super thin, uh, not the same thickness actually, oh wrong one, I did the wrong part, so it's this one here, I was wondering why it wasn't symmetrical on both sides, so this one right here. I can flatten this part. Now let's try and put it back together. 
what I have done that, not for the entire thing, it will take a bit more work to get it neater for here, but the idea is, if I can do that for all of it up to the bottom part of the body, then I will have four layers, four edges, which I can then make four sets of dorsal spines. Um, so I think that would be a really cool idea. Again, what I would then do, two, instead of making it as normal, like down and then up all the way, I would make it up a little bit. So not fully up all the way. So like how you would normally do a dorsal spine. I'll leave a little bit of extra at the top so it's got that sort of blade edge. So I'll come down, up, and then up, down, up, up. If that makes sense. But yeah, that is the idea. I don't have a pen. Let me show you. I've got a pencil. So normally, dorsal spine would be. Just like that. But I was thinking if I bring it up, bring it up. It's gonna be such a bad draw and trying to do a bit more action. Like that, so you have basically like this is the best example of this one here. Instead of going all the way up, you'll go up, then a gap, and then a little edge, and down, up, edge, down, up, edge, down. I think that would be a, a nicer way to do things, um, a little bit of variation on the originality of the, the dorsals. So that is what I would do. So I definitely think I'm going to go with this. Um, of course, when I do the actual fold of mine, I need to get this as accurate as possible. To get it, uh, to get them all as neat, and then I would make them as normal um, here, and then possibly sink it down a bit of a unit um, if it ends up being too much. I can make them as perfect as I can first, then I could glue all the inside, and then just simply just push it down. If I, if I think the body is a bit too big compared to the tail, because this way. Uh, the tail will be much more like razor sharp. I can, I, I can imagine it, I can feel it, so it's definitely what I want to do. So I'm definitely going to be doing that. Okay, I was thinking as well for the scales. I don't know if I will shape them or not, but um, I think if I do shape them, that I will shape each one completely different. Well, I still need to do a test on this to see how it would look. So let me just um, try an example of this. I don't know how this is going to work. Let's do a 4x4. Four four. So. But anyway. Normally you would have uh, just scales like that, but I was thinking, um, no. When you do this, you would pull out, you would you would uh, reverse fold up the same amount of paper for each and individual, uh, every one, and then you would sink you would sink it in, of course, to get your scales. But I was thinking if I did some perfectly, did some by not pulling out enough paper, and then did some by pulling. Uh, way too much paper, so some will be perfect, some will be completely too fat, some will be really thin. So I think, I don't know, I may, I'll, I'll need to do a test to see how that would look, but I think that's something that I would possibly go into doing. Um, so that way it holds together the scales, because if I don't shape them, um, I most likely need to somehow glue them, possibly. I don't know yet because you have this bulge and then the, the scales push out. Again, that could be a, a nice little cool effect, but at the moment I definitely want to go with those scales, so I need to do a test on those to see how they look. Right, next we have, I'll just go with the back legs. 
Um, all four legs, you collapse the same. And they all have basically the same base. So this is what it looks like when you originally collapse it. And then you just need to open it up and then form the transition units wherever they are. It's like two or three layers up. But yeah, you basically do the transition units, then you get the pleats, which is this one here. So when you collapse the transition units, you will have this. And then you just make the dorsal, uh, the, the, the pleats as normal as you would with like Ryujin. So, but the thing is with um, the way they are drawn, because they are incorrectly drawn by one unit on the crease pattern, they won't lie perfectly flat like this. Um, right. Yeah, if I open up, because I was playing about with yeah, shaping this because I couldn't because I realised I had creased it wrong. But anyway, this is supposed to be a mountain fold, and then a valley fold, and then a mountain fold. So you would you would make that, and then it would be a mountain fold. And this would be the mountain fold. Valley. So that's how they should look. But because the scales are creased one unit too high, you can see what's happened. We have scales on the right hand side, but none on the left hand side. So bringing them down one unit will fix um, that that problem. Um, because when I did this, I, I was thinking, why is it not lying flat? I'm doing it correct. Why am I getting this type of result? I looked at the crease pattern and I compared it to the video of the designer collapsing his and with the picture on the screen, um, I noticed it was a unit to um, to low. So we needed to add an extra unit into. That. And then once you do that, it's just a matter of uh, giving it a nice curve, reverse folding the parts at the bottom and thinning them down to make the, the toes or the claws and then again just giving it a curve depending on what type of posture you want. The designer has it on the ground but he just has a nice little um, front curve and then the, the, the claws flat on the ground. So that's a really nice one. Um, I may consider a flying or so somewhat, so I need to uh, go about planning that. Again, it's just to try and keep it different from the designers, and um, it's just what I like to do. So, you would do that with all four legs because they they're all the exact same, and also um, this part right here, which all the legs have, there and there. That part is sort of the shoulder blade, if you would, if you could call it that. Because we have the scales, then it would come up like this. And if you look at the designer's fold, look at the front leg, and um, he has basically four dorsal spines at the top. Because when you collapse it, you have the option to to do that. So that's it right here. Again, it's incorrect because of um, the creases, but. A good example, you would basically make a mountain fold like that, and then you can manipulate the layers, fold it over one another halfway, and then create a dorsal spine. That's what the designer did in his video. So, you would basically oops, pull out the layers, and then either whichever way it is. Fold over half and half, and then reversal for dorsal spines. But this is that's terrible at this, but it's what the designer did. Now, 
Again, we'll go with the head. So, you're thinking, how does this look like a head? There's nothing to me that rings dragon head. Um, so how do we go about turning this into a dragon head? So first of all, we need to figure out what is what. So we have one, two, three, four spikes at the top. If you look at the designer's fold, he has four spikes um, on the top of the head. And then we have two flaps uh, as well. We don't really know what those do yet. They could be somewhat tied to the eyes. But, so we, we know we have four spikes for the head, two unknown flaps. Now if we look here, we have one, two, three points with multiple edges in between each one. So what I'm thinking is, this will be the chest, the front of the dragon. Then we have three points, we have the bottom jaw the tongue and the top jaw. So this, I'm going to assume that, that feels correct, is the bottom jaw, the tongue and the top jaw. Okay, so we know that. Now, these points in between must be the teeth. But we have teeth inside the tongue as well, which, unless you want a spiky tongue, Again, there's nothing wrong with that. If you look at the designer's fold, we can just see the tongue, a nice little curve, but we don't see any spikes in the teeth. Now, if you look at the top jaw, I can count, I think, one, two, three, four, five, five teeth on the top jaw. So how many points do we have? That is the top jaw here. One, two, okay, one, okay, one, two, three, four. At least six, I think. Let's check the crease part. So one, two, six. We have six on each of the top and bottom jaws for both sides. We have six potential teeth that we can make for the top and bottom jaw. Now, the thing with the designer's fold that I personally don't like about the mouth. It looks like the mouth goes all the way to the back of the head. That's the only thing that I don't like about it. So, what I would possibly do is thin down the teeth as normal. Um, you can't really pre-crease this because if you fold bisectors they will create the sort of gusset forms that you see in the ancient dragon on the sinks on the body. They won't meet perfectly at the point if you fold edge to edge. So you need to just fold it slightly less. Till there. Crease that and then sink it. And you would do that for all of them. So once you would do that, I would just, again, once I have them as thin as possible, I would start with the back one and then pull it up and then again try and thin it down as much as possible. I want to try and make this as scary as a tooth as I can make. So I want to try and give it a really nice de deadly curve like that. Like that. So I would do that with the back one and then I would probably pull it down as far as possible to see where I can get it and then I'll do that for the rest of them and then where the back bottom teeth ends and where the top one ends I would most likely try and glue a few layers there to try and hold them so I don't extend the, the jaw too much because I want to try and close the jaw otherwise it would end up like the joker that joker look but that's what I would do and then with the spikes inside the tongue, you could either, if you don't have a use for them, you could just reverse them inside to get rid of them. So when you do that,
once you do that you have the tongue and then it's just a matter of however you want to go about reversing um, to make it thinner you can do that and they're just reverse folds you can sink them and then you have the tongue and then you do the same with the top now the back spikes here you can thin them down it's again you've got extra extra things to use for details so it's a matter of what to do with them you can thin them down and then sort of curve them up maybe make some like side head spikes something like that because you have how many do you have these ones you have one two three so you have six potential extra spikes to add somewhere on the head so it's again it's just a matter of where to go about doing that I'd probably form the mouth first and then decide where to do that but you can add them you can hide them it's entirely up to you now the eyes again it's the eyes are one of those things that you can add you, you don't need to add um, you have two extra flaps to play about with how to go about doing that or you can use it to add more detail then you can fold that behind and then just create a simple eye similar to the ancient dragon like that oops oh, stay back like that and then you can puff it out or you can do the same with this one the bottom one underneath might probably not because you can attach that to the top jaw and then the bottom jaw like that so we're already starting to have an eye resemblance, a face resemblance and um, again for, get those teeth formed in we'll have those spikes up and shape them however you want because you have extra layers in the head and uh, you can I think I, yeah I did do it for this one just to see what it looked like you can unsink one edge you can thin it down so you'd have a spike, but then you'd have two spikes at the end of it. Again, however you want. It's just a little thing that I like to try. Try and try all the possibilities that I can think of before I I shape to see what I like, to see what I don't like. But again, already we have a nice resemblance on the head. And the cool thing about the eye is you can form it like that, you can open it out, you can put cotton wool on it anything hard, um, puff it out, recollapse it and then form like edges, you can even create like an eyebrow sort of thing like that. So you have the eyebrow on top, you could fold that part over, just bring it down slightly, just over the nice puffed eye. So that's again something that I will actually probably do, but I'll need to do a bit more testing on this. To, um, to see how it looks and then finally the tail no, uh, the wings it's just a matter of personal preference the designer from the looks of it has kept it really simple so we would need first of all let's just peg this back together just to try and make it easier to show Out. So we would first of all need, let, let's just create the, the shape that you would want, so like that. So you'd have it curved at the bottom and then like that. Now we have uh, multiple layers, most likely. Yeah, so we have this. So what we could do is make this part the thicker part at the front, which will have a nice curve, and then we can just I think I pizza. Yeah. 
you can click it to get it to lie flat. So you keep it here flat and then spread the clips. And then once you do that for those ones, uh, it'll be easier if you have a peg here to basically create um, oh, what's that? What's that called again? Uh, the pivot, the pivot point for where these pleats will start and where they will finish. Then once you get to here, as I'm going to guess, just pulling out these layers, the exact same. Uh, well, how I did Olivia. So let's see how much we can get in terms of volume. From filling out all these. That's it, we don't have that much volume, so I think maybe the designer also did the same for the other side. He just completely pulled out all the layers. So let's put it on this side as well. So we're basically creating like a leaf shape. And it's a good idea to have a test fold as well because you can play about, you can decide what you're going to do and if you have ideas for things, you have the test fold to test them out to see if they'll actually work. But we'll have something like this. Yeah, I think this is actually a better, a better way of doing it. I don't think I've pulled them out all the way, I'll do one more because the front of the, the wing on the designer's fold isn't super small, it goes up to the head so I think if I curve the head up, yeah that's a good perfect size so if I curve the head up here and if you can see, if you look at the picture, the front thick part of the wing is similar to the size of the head so I probably could uh, throw out another one So we basically have like a leaf shape. And then what I would do is, if, if I were to do this, I would glue, first of all make sure it's all nice and flat and as best as I can get it. Then I would glue all the layers in between so it's perfectly flat. And then I would fold like this part over. And this part over again and again, maybe a few times to try and get it a nice thickness. So we're already starting to create and um, the shape of a wing. So once I'd be happy with that, I would glue these parts to make them really solid and um, really thick. Add a lot of wire into it, and then carve that. So we have the front of the wing, then I'd be thinking um, how do I want to shape it? Do I want to keep it simple? Do I want to just make a nice mountain fold? I looked from, from designers fold, that's what they have probably done. They've just created some simple mountain and valley folds and uh, folded them in.
Yeah, I'll probably keep the pleats in place, but I think I've pulled some apart, but... So it's something like that, and then I'd probably hide. I probably wouldn't have pulled out all these layers to try and keep it a bit neater. I'd fold some of those behind. But you start to see some sort of resemblance to the wing, and then it's just a matter of, and you can do it like a Lydian, you would fold it and then reverse the parts, or like the Arizawa Yuga Dragon make the spikes on the wings but again it's tied up to you I don't think I'll do that this time I'll try and keep it slightly different so I may actually just keep it like that because that actually looks really nice but yeah that is basically it once you would have all that um, done you would just a matter of think about how to posture the model how do you want it I want it to be like the designers where it's it's on the table, a nice little curve, it's standing, or do I want it to be sort of fly, like levitating, so the tail's just hanging down, and then it's curved, the arms are out, they're up and out, I'll just show this one, so they're up and out, that's the back leg, up and out, or hanging down, so it's basically flying up but hanging down. So, yeah, that is basically the thought process that I would do when making mine, and it's what I do for every model. I plan it all out, and a good thing is um, dry shape as well. So, dry shaping is adding all the details without any glue because if you start adding details and then gluing, um, you may realise, oh this wasn't actually a good idea, oh but I've glued it, I can't really undo it. If I do undo it, then it may rip the paper, there may be glue marks. Like just say I did this, I glued it, then I realised, oh it's not going to work. If I pull it apart, this part will get seen, there will be glue marks there and it will, it will, it will be a mess. So if I can do all this dry first and then go, okay it's going to work or it's not going to work and then I can decide so it's saving you that little bit of um, it's saving you not ruining all that work that you have just done to put in this model or a model so yeah that is it everyone thank you all for watching um, I can't wait to show you my fold of this uh, I'm going to get back onto collapsing it it's been a while since I've touched it so Anyway, that is it everyone. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.